Alright guys, such crap again, so I hope you're doing well and enjoying your day. So far, Dashi and Scrappy believe that this Celium gimmick that he's been running with for the last several months now is not going to work any longer. There's checking out the opponents, shooting the bodies, coming in the game to idea, has got an old on Scrappy and Dashi. They don't reckon it's going to work anymore. Is this potentially a factor that's going to lead to Faze's downfall from now to the end of the season? Very much enjoyed to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I greatly appreciate it. Here from Tyler Fennelly talking about how Miami talked in his time, but we've also got to talk elsewhere on Miami Heretics because there were some interesting things that happened with their organization yesterday. Firstly, X Defiant. Obviously, there's been lots of talk about this game over the last couple of days. This was a match they played now a couple of days ago. I'm guessing they're going to upload this again to their YouTube channel over the coming days, but it was cool to see some OG names here, right, really. Okay, Pentagram joins Crim6, Slacked, and X. The other team was TP, Attached, Space Lee, and John. So um, they make it quite clear, I think, X Defiant. They are going to try and be a competitive product with Call of Duty. And maybe there will be a world where some old school COD pros come back and play this. Whether it's competitively ready, that's another question entirely. Whether the game's any good, that is a matter for debate. But um, they are going to try something, and Aegis is certainly going to try something, based on what they have said now for some time. This, by the way, the confirmation we've been looking for, it's going to be COD Black Ops 6. There's been lots of talk about what it's going to be called. Is it going to be Black Ops 5? Is it going to be something else? But no, it's Black Ops 6. So effectively, Cold War was in hindsight. It's Black Ops 5, and, um, well, anyway, Trek says, yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. I will say this tweet, by the way, got, I mean, what is this, 48,000 likes on it or something? Pretty sure last year's Modern Warfare 3 reveal video got, like, 40k likes. So, um, you know, already there's lots of hype about this game, and for good reason. Like, it's a Black Ops game, it's a Trek game. Everyone's telling me it's going to be great. So, um, you know, time will tell if that's actually true or not, of course. But, uh, yeah, Trek are obviously excited to get back in the picture. And, look, I've loved every Trek out game. Black Ops Cold War maybe wasn't as good as some of the other ones. I still think it was pretty damn good for competitive and in, there was some debate on this basically because in the CDL era it's probably been the best game that we've played. I know that I gave Black Ops Cold War a lot of credit at the time. I used to get roasted in the comments for saying the game was good but um, I think in hindsight people have come around to the fact that actually yeah Cold War was a pretty good game compared to what we've had. Now was it Black Ops 1, 2, 3 or 4? Probably not. So that's why you know Miami did this and said thanks for being the best Saga, right, and obviously missing out Carl War. And this created some, you know, degree of controversy because Jake Hell says, look, they're getting cooked for this in the replies, but um, look, Carl War was not an elite game. Method says it was an elite competitive game. Maybe it was, certainly in the last five years, you can argue it. But um, in the grand scheme of Cod history, I don't know. I think the maps could have been better. But once Raid was properly in and once Standoff was back, it was a good year, there's no doubt about it. And hopefully this year will be a similar story when the game launches. Obviously, Miami say, look, it was good, but Black Ops 4 gave us this, which is when Heretics uh, knocked out G2 of the Pro League qualifier to make it through and qualify for the Pro League, of course, for that season, which was quite the story. And of course, Methods was on the other side of this, unfortunately for him at the time. And then the breakdown, like, well, Black Ops 4 also gave us this, the one versus one, Scump versus Selly, and one of the other, you know, more famous moments in recent optic history. Of course, that Dashy one versus three. Look, if you look at that one versus three in isolation, like if that happened online in a series, no one really cares that people will be like, okay, nice one v three, but nothing crazy. It's just the moment right? It's the importance of that one versus three for Dashi that makes it one of the most compelling clips we have seen in a rather long time. These are the player cards by the way, and we've got to look at and dive into some of their search and destroy play, because wow, this was particularly impressive. Their first blood rate is actually absurd in search. We have, for SMGs, the best first blood player in the world, in the league right now, in metals, 21 in 7 in first bloods, and for ARs, we have Lucky, 21 in 8. So, <laughs> I mean, these numbers are, are categorically ridiculous, and they're 11 for in search this stage. So, very impressive for Miami to turn that around because, look, we've talked about this with other teams. Let's say you're Ravens, or let's say you're, you know, even when Vegas were good. If you can become elite tier in search and destroy, then you actually have a really good chance. Like, Optic genuinely, had they lost that game four six star hard points, might well have gone on to lose to Miami Heretics here game five. Like, it was very possible. They're okay at hard points, their control is not good good, as you guys can tell, but they make up for it and they're able to get top six and win many online series by just winning most searches in most situations. You know, winning a search off phase, never easy, but they did it. Maybe this event it was easy because everyone was beating them in search and destroy, but still paints the picture that, you know, this team 
is competitive, especially in that game mode. I think since Real's come in, they've clearly taken a step. They play at a very high pace, which is why you see some nice numbers here, despite the negative overall record in the stage. Vickel, however, has been their weakest player, right? So there is something to say on, you know, his future on the team, if maybe they underperform, whether further changes might need to be made on that side. But I don't really see Vickel going anywhere anytime soon, and he's been solid enough. However, they also released yesterday their coach. So Noel, who was their coach for some time, I wasn't really sure exactly, you know, what he was up to, this guy, just because when you think of uh, Coach of Heretics, you think of Method Sick, right, who is kind of still there as the coach. Now, there's questions on, too, whether he's a positive attribute to the team. You know, there's always questions on this from a coaching POV, whether they actually do anything or not. But I was kind of surprised that, um, you know, Miami Heretics have officially released their head coach. And now, I guess, Method Sick is going to be like their full-time coach, whereas he wasn't necessarily before especially because after they've just had a good result, right? Well, it's a good result based on our expectations and the community side. Maybe Heretics want more. Maybe top six isn't enough. Maybe they feel like, no, we should have actually beaten Optic and should have taken a further step. I think they've got to be happy with the progress, Miami. I feel like they have made changes that have taken them in the right direction, but, you know, maybe the progress isn't quick enough or whatever they think, and they're going to change the staff as a result of things. So kind of confused exactly what's going on behind the scenes there at Miami, but, um, you know, potentially behind the scenes Spanish politics continues. Now we've got to talk about a team that of course might be played in the major in Optic Texas. They went on to win the entire thing, beating FaZe. Toronto of course also beat FaZe on their way to the grand finals. FaZe fell out top three. Pretty rare that FaZe, I mean like FaZe are never worse than top three. That's always how it is. They're always top three, top two or top one. But usually they're in the finals in these type of scenarios, especially when they make it to the winner's finals, which they almost always do. But um, look, they lost to Toronto. Crazy. Game five, round 11. Then they play Optic. And they also lose that one in Game 5. So, um, look, the respawn this tournament phase was ridiculous. Their search and destroy let them down in both series they played against Toronto and on Optic. So are we expecting that to continue forever? Look, I think FaZe will bounce back nicely. However, there have been lots of talking points on FaZe. Certainly the shooting body stuff has been, you know, riling lots of people up for some time. And possibly for good reason that Cell, and to be fair, the rest of the team, just keep on shooting bodies. And, look, it used to be a sign of great disrespect, and it still is, to be fair. But you can argue that they've kind of ruined shooting bodies because they, sh they shoot bodies for like any reason at all. There's not even a reason to do so and cells still still shooting their bodies like, you know, 15, 20 seconds into the map. That wasn't really the case in the past. You'd shoot bodies when you spat on someone round 11 rather than, you know, the way that FaZe do it today. And whatever, that's their strategy. That's Selium's strategy. And, you know, Selium's an entertaining character. He's going to try and put the opponent off their game. But Scrap and Dash, you believe it ain't working anymore. You know, I can say like, bro, when you were in game, Chat going crazy after that. <laughs> I almost that. passed the fuck out, I swear to God. Dude, yo, I swear, I was like, this guy is blocking out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh, MC, came, like, MC came in my fucking ear after third map. Wait, what was he saying? Because MC, I saw him, like, dude, it, it, honestly, like, I don't know if this gimmick's gonna stop after this event, but holy shit, like, his body shooting, like. He, no, he, he, he's just, uh, he's just like, oh my fucking God. He's just screaming, doing his dumb ass shit. Is he just trying to, he's just trying to go for checkouts. He's literally like, he's just actually, going for checkouts. He's not even saying anything rogue. He's just going for checkouts. Uh, and I was like, oh hell no, get over here. I said, get the fuck over here after fourth map. I even saw Josh your body four or five in the middle. So I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm not shit. gonna lie, it's actually good shit. The, I think the venue was the loudest after that, but like map five, like no, like I. Uh, like that was insane. Entire, that was it insane. Was so loud. But when we were like setting up, because you know we we're watching in the back, like, yeah, yeah. to finish. I'm like, holy. So FaZe were obviously big time for the confidence this weekend. The fact that Selium got this graphic made before the Subliners series was like, wow, these guys are convinced they're going to win. They didn't win in the end. And Cell's been doing this thing for some time, you know, he'll come to Pred in the bathrooms and say, you know, nice kangaroo or whatever it was that he said at the time. And he's in the game chat, you know, trying to check out the other guys by saying various things. And, you know, Cell's been doing this for some time now. But the feeling is that maybe it was working, right? Like the way that Cell was acting, shooting the bodies, talking to the game chat, especially because FaZe are usually slamming you. It was maybe getting in the head to some of these players. But now the Optic guys and Scrub are saying, yeah, I'm kind of used to this now. Cell's been doing this. Okay, sure, it's his strategy, but it's not going to work anymore, right? You're not, this gimmick is 
is not going to give the advantage that Faze, I imagine, think that it potentially does. I mean, I don't think they'd shoot bodies if they didn't believe there was some sort of advantage to be gained. I mean, you know, you are just wasting ammunition. You're also reducing your accuracy rates, technically. Not like anyone cares. But this is why, like, Vivid, maybe, always used to be number one accuracy is because... You know, if you're shooting bodies, you're missing bullets, according to the game. So I don't even know if they're tracking accuracy stats anymore. But um, nonetheless, you see what I mean. Draws was doing it, of course, to Scrappy. But there's actually good beef involved here. And this was online, so it makes a fair bit of sense. Whereas on, you know, natural proper matches... You see stuff like this. I mean, this is against the subliners a while ago, shooting all sorts of bodies. And certainly he has a good time doing it. Maybe he just does it because he thinks it's fun. But um, I also think that there's got to be some reasoning behind it where he feels like or they feel like there's some sort of advantage to be gained in, like, the mentality and the mental warfare game that is played in this game. And maybe that was true for some time. But um, now their chief competitors believe they've not got that anymore. Now, is it enough of an advantage, realistically, that is now disappearing, apparently? And... Obviously, it's only Dashy and Scrap, Scrap especially kind of saying this. Maybe, you know, some other players, it still affects them. I don't know. Maybe Envoy gets his body shot and he's still tight. <laughs> Probably not. But um, I guess you never know. But if FaZe no longer have that, it's not exactly an ace up their sleeve, but does it reduce their advantage to some degree? Possibly. Frankly, their respawn has been so good that if their search and destroy was, you know, if they just won a search when they needed to, they probably would still have won this tournament. They lost, I think they're one of six S&Ds they won in this event. And online, I think they've lost eight of their last nine, which is very rare you see that from FaZe. But their respawn was so good that it didn't really matter. But, you know, what they say, search and destroy wins championships. And even they shot bodies on the hands of Draza against Scrappy, down 5-4, up 5-4, sorry, on that Rio search in the game five of the losers final, or the winners finals, <laughs> getting everything wrong, but you know what I'm saying. And then as soon as that happened, they went on to lose the, the round 11. So maybe it's starting to backfire on these guys to some degree. Thought this is interesting as well. Four years ago, I guess yesterday now, Karma played his final ever pro game. You guys know that he, of course, retired from that Seattle surge team mid-season after, well, it was an absolute shambles, wasn't it? A player that when he retired was pretty unanimously considered the greatest, I would say. And, you know, obviously times have changed since then with Skump going on to win another event in the start of 2022 and they're continuing to perform at a very high level. And obviously Crim6 winning the World Championship just a couple of months later. Karma has... You know, I wouldn't say he's no longer in the conversation, but, you know, Karma's gone from being, like, unanimously the GOAT to now probably third. And, you know, people aren't talking about Karma as much as they used to before. Maybe they should again, because now he's a coach, right? Now he's won as a coach with Optic, which is a great storyline in and of itself. So I wonder whether, you know, I don't think that's necessarily going to be included in the greatest of all time rankings. Maybe it does add some, you know, something to his career that now he's gone on to coaching and he's making some success. Obviously, you've got to separate the two sides but um i still thought it was interesting to think about so very much interested to your thoughts in the comments below i will say i believe this comment was probably made by dashi's like you know manager on social media so you know i, I didn't want to clickbait with this because it's possible that dashi actually did leave this comment but um i thought it was rather entertaining anyway so very much enjoyed your thoughts in the comments below hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new take care and i'll see you next time is that a penguin I got Holy double. Fuck. Wait, that's not a pit. That's a fucking. Uh... I got the doggy. Woof, woof, woof. I'm with you. What bird is that it called again? A Rio?